This video is an overview of DNA technology uh, from AQA A2 Unit 16. Um, the first step in DNA technology is to identify and isolate a DNA fragment of interest. There's two ways of doing that. The first way that we're going to talk about is to use restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes cut DNA at a specific sequence which is usually a palindrome, so it reads the same forwards and backwards uh, on either strand. And um, if you break open a million cells and isolate the DNA from those, then each uh, cell's DNA will be cut in exactly the same places. Uh, you can cut DNA randomly, but that's less useful. If we do this procedure, uh, we would expect a four base recognition site to cut roughly every 250 bases and a six base recognition site to cut roughly every 4,000 bases. Uh, the DNA that is cut um, can have sticky ends or blunt ends if you recall your restriction enzyme knowledge. So once we've cut the DNA with a restriction enzyme, for example PST1, we can then run that DNA on a gel. If we do that, we do electrophoresis, we'll separate this, the fragments and we'll end up with what looks like a long smear of DNA fragments on the gel. And if we use a radio labeled probe specific to our gene of interest, we can identify the fragment that has that uh, gene and then we can uh, isolate and purify that. Uh, you could clone all of those fragments or you could cut out the region of the gel and clone specifically those fragments into plasmids and then we can screen those plasmids using a radio labeled probe and we will end up with identifying a plasmid that contains the gene fragment of interest. We would normally do that if we're wanting to identify a DNA sequence that we don't fully know the details of. Uh, the alternative way of doing it is to use RNA as a starting point rather than DNA. What you can do is find a cell that is expressing your gene of interest and use reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase makes DNA from RNA. It will make a single strand of DNA uh, copied from the RNA molecule. You can then use DNA polymerase to copy that fragment to make double-stranded DNA. So how does reverse transcriptase work? Well, most RNA sequences have a string of adenine bases at the end and you can use a string of thymine bases as your primer and that will then reverse transcribe all of the RNA in that sample. Uh, when you do the DNA polymerase you use a primer at the other end of your known sequence and that will specifically amplify the RNA of the gene that you're interested in. So we have isolated a gene either from DNA or from RNA that we're interested in. The next stage is to clone it and there are two ways of doing that as well. The first way is in vitro cloning which is effectively the polymerase chain reaction. So similar to what we've talked about with the RT-PCR, um, we would have two specific primers this time, DNA primers, and we would amplify the DNA. Uh, the stages involved are that you heat to 95 to separate the double-stranded DNA into signal fragments. You would then uh, cool your sample to 55, for example, to allow your primers to bind. You would then uh, heat again to 72 which is perfect conditions for the DNA polymerase that you use and that would then extend the primer to the length of the DNA and you now have two DNA double-stranded fragments where you had one and that is one cycle of PCR you would do perhaps 30 cycles of PCR uh, which would generate millions of copies and you will have cloned your DNA fragment. The alternative method is in vivo cloning that is using living organisms to make multiple copies of your fragment which means you have to get your DNA into a living organism. We use bacteria so we do a process called transformation. So starting with our DNA fragment we would cut the DNA to give it sticky ends uh, with two different restriction enzymes. 
we then identify a plasmid which is a small circular piece of DNA that we can use um, we would cut the plasmid with the same two enzymes we used to cut our fragment that would allow us to put our DNA into the, the plasmid DNA using an enzyme called the DNA ligase and we then have a circular DNA plasmid molecule and we do a process called transformation which usually involves calcium ions and a heat shock or a change of temperature which makes the bacteria permeable to plasmid DNA. The DNA enters the bacteria and then we plate the bacteria on an agar plate. Now what we usually do is have the plasmid which has an antibiotic resistance gene which means that we can put antibiotic on the agar plate and only bacteria that are antibiotic resistant because they have the plasmid will grow and then the second level of screening is we could have for example in this example a fluorescence gene in the plasmid and we insert our fragment of interest in the middle of that fluorescence gene to destroy it so that cells that have the plasmid can grow in the antibiotic but they are fluorescent and cells that have the plasmid with the gene of interest inserted will also grow on the antibiotic plate but they will not fluoresce. So we've now cloned many copies of our gene of interest. The final stage is to do something with it. I won't discuss that in this video. Um, we'll look at that elsewhere. But we could sequence the DNA. We could genetically modify it. We could put it into an organism so that it genetically modifies that organism. Or we could look at gene therapy. All of those topics are covered elsewhere.